This episode of Keep It Cute is to big up our Black educators. Okay, so um, I'm here in Seattle, Washington today because I have just wrapped up attending my first People of Color Conference hosted by NAIS, which is the National Association of Independent Schools. For many that don't know, I am a, um, I work in second grade at an independent school in Los Angeles. And um, each year, the National Association of Independent Schools hosts this conference that brings together people of color that work in independent schools. Um, and basically, independent schools is the same as a private school. It is exposed to um, academic academic and financial privilege. So being a person of color in those spaces sometimes can just be a lot. And sometimes it's just welcoming to be around other people who are going through similar experiences. And so I feel so empowered and so privileged to have attended such a great workshop. I mean, excuse me, conference. Um, the conference was amazing. If you work in independent schools and you have not been to POCC. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, I was supposed to go last year. Some things didn't work out and I was able to go this year in Seattle, which Seattle is a great town. So shout out to Seattle too, because um, the food has been good. The people have been great. Everybody has been very accommodating because um, downtown Seattle has really been taken over by this conference and it has been such a great experience. So on this episode, we're literally giving only the privilege of talking about black educators. And so we're kicking it off by really differentiating between the public and private sector. So um, I've been able to work in both. I have been in a public school and I have been in a private school. And personally, my experience in a private school has been 10 times better than what it has been in a public school. Not to say that there aren't challenges in private schools, but it's just my experience has been a lot better. Um, the ac amount of access really puts you in a different place. Um, so one example I can give is I was at a public school where the teacher was required to put in their paper for copying things where at a private school you can run off thousands of pieces of paper you know it's those small things that really impact student learning student outcome because you tend to modify your printing to a piece to that and I mean it's something small as printing but um, as a person of color in a private school you are few and far between. There aren't a lot of you in comparison to a public school. In public schools, you see people of color throughout the staff and faculty, and that's not always the case in a private school. And so private schools um, at least acknowledge that, and so they have conferences like POCC. Black educators are extremely important because we are essentially mirrors for many of our students. A lot of them don't understand or see firsthand, um, particularly Black people in academia, making it something through education. And then when you get into the private sector, they don't really see themselves at all. So being a Black educator is so important. Um, our closing remarks by Pedro Nagara, who is a professor at UCLA, really made it, um, his whole closing speech was about how education is very transformative and can be the one tool that can really dispel inequities in our world. And I wholeheartedly agree with that statement. Um, right now, education for sure is a fallacy and has us believing that it's equitable, but we're not really seeing many of the benefits tangibly um, and even growing up they always tell you like education is the key to success and yes learning and knowing is um, but we're still battling systemic issues that we have no control over and so reclaiming that power is one way that we can through education 
And as a black educator, it is extremely important to keep that visibility. Um, it is important for us to illuminate our own stories and um, highlight our ways of learning. There is no single handed way to learn anything. You can learn through song, you can learn through dance, you can learn through stories, you can learn through writing, you can learn through numbers, you can learn through text. Like there is no one way to learn anything. And so when we illuminate all of our various styles and various ways that we learn, it just creates a more knowledgeable society where we can just flow off of each other. I met so many dynamic people this weekend just from having simple conversations at the various workshops that it really has sparked a um, greater love for, for education again. Like I kind of stumbled into this field. It wasn't really what I wanted out of life. Um, and so I'm learning how to navigate between what my passion and what I'm actually doing and merging the two because they, I do enjoy it, but it's not what I wanted. And so that's where things like this YouTube and my blog come in because I like to communicate and write, but I also love education and learning. So merging it all together to make it a nice little melting pot um, is a great way for me to illuminate my own and be authentic. A buzzword for this weekend was authenticity and how do you be authentic and using my platform like this channel to talk about black education because black education is bomb, um, is really how I am able to be my authentic self. And then how do I translate that to my students? Typically I have my nails on, I don't have any nails. I'm always changing up my hair. I wear my bamboos every day. So this is how I'm authentically me in the classroom. Um, and that authenticity ha is really important um, because it comes through and they recognize that. Um, I am so grateful to have attended this conference. I'm bigging up all my black educators out there. Um, hearing the experiences of black people in private schools across the nation, and it is empowering, it is encouraging, it is uplifting, it is enlightening. It's all the E words. Um, but most importantly, it's really motivated me to really go after what is mine. Um, and as a person of color in any profession, you tend to dim your light. And the closing ceremony, they sang in closing like this little light of mine and I'm going to let it shine, which rings very true because there are so many untapped talents that I possess that I choose to not reveal um, just out of fear, you know, so working through those things professionally, academically, my research is on black women. I'm all about things that are going to uplift my culture and my community and put us on the platform and pedestal that we belong. And so after attending this and seeing the hundreds, I'm gonna insert a video probably like over here of the hundreds of black women and men that are teaching and working in schools. We were all doing the wobble together. Like how black can you get? <laughs> um, but being sharing that space and being able to discuss and talk to one another, I'm very thankful. Um, POCC is a long running tradition and I hope I'm afforded the privilege to go next year and keep going because it's a great experience. Maybe I'll be able to, you know, drum up new positions in private schools for myself, but I'm excited. And on this episode, I wanted to keep it very brief. I wanted to just shout out all of my black educators and how much you are needed, appreciated and supported um, because we are necessary and we're awesome, like period. <laughs> so if you, have your favorite black educators shout them out in the comments where are they so we can send them some love and light because it's trying times navigating all the political and social climates so shout out your favorite black educator in the comments and thank you guys for watching